This is part 6 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss in-process hosting in ASP.NET Core and along the way, we'll also discuss what is Kestrel Server. This is the same project that we've been working with so far in this video series. Notice, within this program.cs file, we have this main method, which is the entry point into this application. When this application is executed, the .NET runtime looks for this main method, and this is where the execution starts. Notice, the main method calls this method, create web host builder, and that method is right here. And this method calls create default builder static method of this web host class. Now, this create default builder method sets up the web host that hosts our application with pre-configured defaults. As part of setting up the web host, this create default builder method does several tasks. And here are some of the tasks performed by this create default builder method. It sets up the web server, loads the host and application configuration information from various configuration sources and configures logging. We'll discuss the various configuration sources available in ASP.NET Core, loading the host and application configuration information and configuring logging in our upcoming videos. In this video, let's understand what the create default builder method does to configure and set up the web server. From a hosting standpoint, an ASP.NET Core application can be hosted in process or out of process. In this video, we'll discuss in process hosting and in our next video, we'll discuss out of process hosting. To configure in process hosting for your application, there is one simple setting. In your ASP.NET Core project file, include this element, ASP.NET Core hosting model with a value of in process. Now, if you recollect from our previous videos in this series, we created this ASP.NET Core project using the empty project template. If we take a look at the project file, Notice the project template has automatically included this ASP.NET Core hosting model element for us and its value is defaulted to in process. That means this application at the moment is using in process hosting model. So when the create default builder method sees this setting, it's going to call use IIS method behind the scenes and host the app inside of the IIS worker process. The worker process name in case of IIS is w3wp.exe and in case of IIS Express it is isexpress.exe. From a performance standpoint, in-process hosting delivers significantly higher request throughput than out-of-process hosting. At the moment, when we run this application, all it does is display Hello World. Now, instead of displaying Hello World, let's display the name of the process that's hosting and executing our application. This code can help us do that. The Hello World message that we see in the browser is coming from this file, startup.cs. And the line that displays that message is right here. So instead of displaying Hello World, let's display the name of the process that's hosting and executing our application. So system.diagnostics dot process dot get current process and on that we use the process name property now let's bring this to the next line so we can see the entire code without having to scroll to the right at this point let's run our application by pressing control f5 there we go the name of the process that's hosting and running our ASP.NET Core application is IIS Express. Why IIS Express? Well, that's because at the moment we are running our project from Visual Studio. By default, Visual Studio uses IIS Express to host and run our application. As you might already know, IIS Express is a lightweight, self-contained version of IIS optimized especially for developing applications. We do not use IIS Express in production. In production, we use IIS. If we have used IIS instead of IIS Express, then the process name here would have been W3WP. We'll discuss deploying ASP.NET Core applications to IIS in our upcoming videos. You can find IIS Express in the system tray. When I right click on the IIS Express, we can see the website that's running, we can stop that site if we want to, or exit IIS Express. 
with out of process hosting there are two web servers involved an internal web server and an external web server we'll discuss out of process hosting in detail in our next video for now just understand with out of process hosting there are two web servers internal and external the internal web server is kestrel and the external web server can be ias nginx or apache depending on the operating system you have on the other hand, with in-process hosting, there's only one web server, that is the IAS that hosts the ASP.NET Core application. So the point that I'm trying to make is, with in-process hosting, we do not have the performance penalty of proxying requests between internal and external web servers. If this is not clear at the moment, please do not worry. We'll discuss out-of-process hosting in detail in our next video and at that point it should be much clear. Now let's understand what is Kestrel. Kestrel is a cross-platform web server for ASP.NET Core. It is supported on all platforms and versions that .NET Core supports. It's included by default as an internal server in ASP.NET Core. Kestrel can be used by itself as an edge server that is internet facing web server that can directly process incoming HTTP requests from the client. The name of the process in Kestrel that hosts and runs our ASP.NET Core application is .NET.exe. At the moment, we are running our ASP.NET Core application from Visual Studio. By default, Visual Studio uses IS Express to host and run our application. So the process name is IS Express. We can also run this ASP.NET Core application from the command line using the .NET Core CLI. CLI stands for Command Line Interface. .NET Core CLI is a cross-platform tool for developing .NET Core applications. It's supported on all platforms, Windows, Mac OS, and all other platforms where .NET Core is supported. To use this tool, launch console window. Notice when I type .NET dash dash help, I see all the commands. We can do everything that we can do with Visual Studio using the .NET Core CLI. We can create a new project using the new command. We can publish the project using the publish command. We can build the project. We can run the project. There are a variety of things that we can do. For now, let's run our ASP.NET Core project. To be able to run our project using the .NET Core CLI, first let's change the directory to the folder that contains our project. Our project is present in C drive. In the projects folder, we have employee management folder. That's the solution folder. Within that, we have another folder with the same name and that's our project folder. While we are in the project folder, execute .NET run. This builds and runs our ASP.NET Core project using the .NET Core CLI. There we go. We have our application up and running and it's listening for incoming HTTP requests at this URL, HTTP localhost 5000. So let's launch another browser tab and navigate to localhost 5000. Now here's the important bit to understand. When a .NET Core application is executed using the .NET Core CLI, Kestrel is used as the web server. And remember, in Kestrel, the name of the process that hosts and runs our application is .NET.exe and that process name is displayed right here. In our next video, we'll discuss out-of-process hosting. At that point, it'll be easy to compare in-process hosting with out-of-process hosting. Thank you for watching.